Hey guys, it's Sabrina again, and today I'm going to walk you through how to make a fitted mask. Um, if you watched my earlier video from two weeks ago, it was it's a basic video on how to make a pleated mask, and those are great. Um, we've actually been making way more of these than the other kind. The other kind are meant to go over like an existing mask or to be used in the hospital, um, but this is what we use for going shopping, and a lot of people are asking for them. We're making um, not even close to as many as we're getting requests for, and I'm hoping there are other seamstresses out there that would like to make this. Um, there's a lot of different patterns, but um, for the sake of the people here in my town who are helping me make them, this is my pattern and I want them to know what I'm doing. Um, if you happen to come across our video and you're somewhere else, that's okay too. All right, so the pattern for this, um, which I've actually posted on my slightly defunct webpage, which I revamped this morning and has now exactly one page on it, it's this pattern and um, I will link it in the comments section. Uh, it does work, my best friend, I emailed it to her, she lives 30 minutes away and she printed it off and she said, yep, I can do it. All right, oh, it did, it fell down. All right, so the pattern has five sizes, child, teen, woman, man, and large man. A um, Couple things about that, um, teen is also okay for very small headed women. Most men and most women are gonna use these woman and man, the adult ones. Um, the large man, we've only had to make three times in the 150 we've made in the last two weeks. So if your guy has a really, really big head, you'll use that one. Otherwise, you're probably okay using this one. If you have a kid and you'll notice, and this goes to probably about 10 years old or so. Um, my eight-year-old uses this. So does my five-year-old niece. And I think my two-year-old nephew, we also kind of made, we might have cut it down a little bit. Anyway, it, you'll notice the nose piece comes way up over the other sizes. We did that on purpose. We found that kids move around a lot and they wiggle and they squirm. And when we had it way down here, it would slip around and it wouldn't cover them and it would slip off their face. So we actually cut it to come way up, a little higher. Seems to stay put even on the crazy two-year-old who runs around um, a lot. Stays on his head. Okay, so when you cut your pattern out, you'll notice there's a big line here. Don't cut that off. That is important. So here's the pattern. Mine says adult L, but it's actually the woman's size because this is my crazy pattern. Lots of crazy. You'll also notice lots of pen marks all over my pattern because I break all the sewing rules. I actually trace my stuff out in pen, um, mostly because I can't find any of my sewing pencils. Oops. Anyway, so here's that line. And when you go to cut this on your fabrics, now we have um, three fabrics here and I'll talk about this one in a little bit, but we have our outer layer and our inner layer, or lining, inner layer, and then the lining layer, the one that's actually in the middle. So the outer one, and this is a whole 100% cotton, this one is too, even though it's got two sides, but um, this is quilting cotton. 100% uh, cotton is very important, and it won't come apart, there we go. You'll notice um, it's you know nice and pretty. That's gonna be our outside, and that's the piece we're actually gonna cut with the full length of this, including that little extra layer. Um, so we're going to cut and we're cutting two of each. So two, four, six, we're cutting six things. And then once we cut out the outer pretty layer that you want on the outside, we're going to fold that in and then we're going to cut the inner layer, two of them like that, and our lining layer, two of them, just like that. Now our lining layer is actually made of a flour sack towel. Um, so are also called tea towels. What we did, we found, um, that a lot of people are, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out what they were going to do with filters or how would this be more effective. And there's a lot of stuff floating around on the internet about what to use as filters. Um, my husband is a nurse and he and the doctors that he works with kind of looked around and they actually found a study out of Norway from 2008. And just in case of pandemic, no one ever thought it would actually be used. Um, what household materials people would have generally in their houses that they could make masks out of and how these fabrics would test up against an N95 filter mask. So um, you have N95s up here, you have HEPA vacuum filters right here, and um, they do filter out things, but you also can't breathe through them. They've recently discovered, so don't use those. And then you have tea towels and you have like everything else way down here. Um, uh, there's also a new study that's talking about the disposable blue shop towels, which are actually really effective. Problem is they're all sold out. And, um, but if you happen to have a bunch of them and you want to make your mask with a pocket so you can put them in, I will tell you how to do that towards the end of the video. All right, so tea towels, probably your grandmother gave you some. They look like this. Um, they're used, a lot of people embroider on them. I actually teach an embroidering class, so I have them, I have a bunch of them all the time. 
Anyway, so um, if you have one in your cupboard that you've never used, um, that would be best ideal if you, you know, but just make sure it's not like beat up, you know, used a bunch of times, has holes in it. That's not going to be very effective. Um, anyhow, so this is our lining layer, our tea towel, and we are going to cut out um, the two of this. The other two things you're going to need for this mask are something to bend over your nose and something to attach it to your head. Now, um, I am a costumer, so I always have big rolls of elastic, and I'm using one eighth inch. This is really hard to find because everyone's all sold out. That's what I prefer to use, although I've used cord elastic before, um, which is fine. I think you could probably also find like a like a head like a thin headband that might actually work. I haven't tried it, um, but let's say you want to use you want to you, you're like well I don't have any elastic so I need to do something else so I'm going to show you how to do ties on that, but you still might want to leave the pocket in there just in case you know stores start carrying elastic again. Um, so mine are made with that elastic casing in it and, um, I will, um, show you what to do. So I actually have another video that shows how to make these ties, which we use on our, this is our pleated, um, surgical mask. And, um, I will link the video, but it's basically, uh, you could use ribbon or bias tape or, um, anything really to make the ties. Instead of doing two 42 inch pieces, you would make um, for 21 inch pieces and you're just going to attach them at the corners at the end, but I'll show you how to do that. All right. So something to attach it to your head and also, um, the wire. So, um, I actually have a piece of wire here somewhere. My daughter's trying to fold it in the background, but I'm sure it's distracting. So we're just going to, I'll just do it on camera. All right. Cause we had one, it escaped. So I've been using, um, coated floral wire. That's actually a little big. So I'll use this one. Um, and I'm cutting it, oh, that's actually really short. That's the one you cut. Okay, we're cutting it between seven and eight inches. This one got a little big, it's a little eight inches. And what we're using is um, 22 or 24 gauge and folding it in half like this um, and twisting it around itself. And the reason that we're doing this is two things. One, it actually gives you a loop to actually sew it in and secure it on one side. And the other thing is, is we discovered that the, um, there you go. We discovered that the twist in the wire actually made it, it made it like it wouldn't kink and get like a bend that would be painful in it. And it made it kind of grip the fabric a little more. It's easier to handle when it's in the mask. Um, so that's what I'm using 22 or 24 gauge coated floral wire. If you don't have floral, there's a lot of options. This is actually 20 gauge wire. It's about the thickness of a paper clip. I wouldn't fold it. I'd only use like one thickness. Um, paper clips can work. They are a little harder. P pipe cleaners I know have been used. They're going to rust. I happen to have a bunch of this floral wire, so that's what I used. Um, anyway, so whatever you do that you have, whatever thing you found to bend the nose piece down, that's important because you want to bend it to your nose and help that mask stay on. Um, so we have, okay, so we have our six pieces. And we're gonna sew, and all the seam allowances are in the pattern, but you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch on all three of these outer edges. Now I've already done this one, you can kind of see it. And after you do that, you're gonna wanna clip a couple of clips, don't clip your threads. It'll be bad. Um, just a couple times, I only do three or four times. And then you're gonna wanna iron it. So there's two philosophies for that. Um, in the beginning, we were doing it like this. Um, come over here. we were um, putting it over the edge of the ironing board and ironing your seams flat and you're, this is going to give you a really like a really you know nice open flat seam um, it's a little harder to do and it takes a little more time because you got to do it like you know twice and it, it really does take a lot of time to do this um, so since we're if you're making only a couple masks for you and your family that's not a big deal if you're trying to make like 20 a day it's a little bit of a bigger deal where did the piece go where did it go? Oh, it's pinned already. Ah, that's why. Sorry, we practiced this video a couple times before we filmed it, trying to make it easier and instead of made everything harder. All right, so that. here's our two pieces. And now what we've been doing is um, we've just been folding it out uh, pretty sides out. So here we are, we sewed it pretty sides together. Now we're flipping it around. And what we've been doing 
is we've just been ironing it like this, right along that edge. Are you focusing in on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. My daughter's tired. She's sitting in a chair. Um, anyway, and what we found when we did this is it took a lot less time. And when you do that, your, your seam is going to kind of want to go to one side anyway. So it's not really going to get in the way. So anyway, so that's what you're going to do. You're going to press it somehow, either open or flat. And then you're going to do your filter piece. This is where your wire comes in. So uh, I'm going to show you how we did this. I'm actually going to show you. I've already started on there. It's so actually going to sit down. So we take our piece of um, filter layer and I'm zigzagging on here. You can come take a look at this. Um, I attached it through the loop and I'm just zigzagging down all the way down. Um, and I'm placing the wire on my filter about a half an inch down. There we go. My foot was caught. Um, about a half an inch down. And that is important because you don't want it to get it too close to the seams that you're going to do up here because then if your needle hits the wire, it will break and that will be very bad. Um, quite sad. So once we've done this, we've zigzagged our piece in and you can see where it kind of went over it, that loop. And we have these ends over here and they're kind of pokey and you don't really want them to poke through your fabric. So we just took a dab of hot glue over, this one's actually done in white, um, over there. And then I stuck another piece of tea towel, little scrap over it. And that hot glue will actually keep those ends from poking out of your mask. Um, when you're doing this, make sure that you don't put too much and press too hard because then your glue will go up here and then you'll try to sew through it later and that will be no fun. So here's our filter piece all ready to go. And there it is. Um, next thing, so we cut those out. Now we've got, we've got three pieces and they've been pressed and prepped and now we're gonna assemble them. Now you do this on my knee usually because it's round, kind of like these masks. And we have our pretty outside layer. This is the longer one. You want it face up. Then you're going to put your inner layer okay that'll be the one that you'll see from the inside of the mask and you're going to put that pretty side or face side down so the seam is out so the two good not salvage dead seams are together and then you're going to take your filter layer now mine is um i've been putting the the wire piece up on this so that there's one more extra layer between your nose and the wire so it doesn't get you know irritated or anything like that um and then you're gonna pin it, and um, I usually put about five pins in here. Um, these are gonna line up pretty well. And you're gonna sew this also on a quarter inch seam. Um, it's more important that the filter layer be caught up with the top seam than the bottom, sometimes So there you go. Sometimes they, they don't exactly all match up perfectly because we're not all perfect robot seamstresses. Anyway, so you pin the top of it and then you're gonna flip it around and you're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Now you've got your um, center seams together. That's kind of important, but um, just as long as you get most of these pretty evenly and they should line up pretty well. And if you cut everything out right, and even they will match up perfectly if you didn't if they don't match up perfectly don't freak out you're there's there's plenty of seam allowance in here to mess around with um i have children making my mess so trust me that extra seam allowance is sometimes important okay so we've pinned both top and bottom okay and i'm actually going to sew this yeah we still haven't figured out how to do the fast forward thing or i'm really not youtube savvy i'm get to uh, watch us sew it really you get slowly. to watch me sew it in real time isn't that awesome all right so oops back to um and i'm sewing this on a three between a two and a three three or stitch length it was on three now it's two and a half um and you're just gonna do a quarter of an inch and this is why this is important that your wire side is up because you really don't want to sew over that wire um to make sure you're taking your pins out as you go if you happen to drive over a pin like i do a lot um, it's probably not going to be the end of the world but taking it really slow on this curve 
making sure everything stays put and it's all lined up. Don't forget to backstitch. All right, so that was the top. Now you could at this point um, clip these curve, a couple clips in here. Um, I'm pretty lazy. We're trying to do these really fast. And so I haven't been clipping them and I haven't really noticed a difference at all. Um, it's, it's not a very sharp curve. All right, so then you wanna go to your um, bottom half that you pinned and same thing, quarter inch, hang on. Got my, am I gonna have to clip it? I caught my threads up in here and they're looped around my foot. Oh, I don't have to cut them, they're just gonna come out. Hey, look at that. All right. You have, So now we have sewn both of our seams. It looks pretty good. Pretty sure we've caught all of our layers in. Oh, okay, there we go. There's a little piece right there. That's not gonna be good. So we're gonna go over that just a little bit. Um, probably should have been paying a little closer attention when I was pinning, but I'm trying to, trying to sew for a video audience. So, all right. Make sure all of your ends, also, if you see me mess up, you'd be like, okay, now I know what to do when I mess up. I am not perfect or a robot seamstress. Okay, looks like all of our ends are caught, so we're gonna flip this all the way over so that you've got your right sides out. You're not giving me the other one, it's already been compressed. All right, so, magic television. Woohoo! look, it's already pressed. Um, so we have, this is actually kind of important because you remember you have hot glue in there. So you don't want to set your really hot iron on that hot glue for very long because if you're my daughter and you did, then you ended up melting the hot glue into your fabric, which won't hurt it, but gosh darn Sylvia. I know it. Um, it just doesn't make it look very pretty. So um, anyway, so you're going to press this. Just be careful not to spend a lot of time on your hot glue and you're going to press it try to get it pretty and this has already been ironed so it doesn't really need much because i did it before anyway so you've got your seams yes i know we're at 17 minutes this is a longer video than last time and then the next thing you want to do now um if you're doing a filter i probably should have done this before if you're doing a filter uh you want a pocket for this the one step you're gonna do slightly differently is you are going to take your inner layer before you attach it and you're gonna actually turn this up a quarter to a half an inch and then stitch that down. So then, so then this layer here will actually have no, it'll be like shorter and this will, cause this will be like, it'll be like that. It'll be like its own thing so when you do this casing um your casing will be here and there'll be a pocket so if you're doing a filter pocket that's how you do that that's pretty simple anyway if you're not doing a filter pocket this is the casing for your elastic you're gonna iron this a um, quarter to a half an inch based on your preference i usually do a quarter it's probably closer to three eighths and then um about a half an inch and then you're gonna pin this actually no we're not gonna pin this we're gonna pin it in a minute um so you do that to both sides this was already done all right, so we're all ironed and ready to go for the top stitching. Now this is important, and the order that you do this in is actually kind of important. Um, so I like to do it from the back side, and we're always starting, we're gonna go top, center, bottom, and then sides. And the reason I like to start on the top is because, uh, sorry, the reason I like to start, see the back side is so that I can make sure that my top side is, I can see just a little bit of it. And that way, and this is a this is a very close to the edge top stitching. Um, and then feel as you're going, feel for your wire because you don't want to hit your wire. You want to come just above it. And um, honestly, it's not going to be super pretty. It's just going to be it's going to be what it is. It's going to be a very functional mess. Um, try to stay on your fabric. That's important. Okay, so we top stitched that and you can kind of see 
where that is and right there. Get close to the edge right there. Anyway, so that's that. And then the second one you're gonna do actually with your pretty sides up. Now this seam is gonna be kind of, this can be kind of clunky. And, um, but the, the, the reason we do this seam is because when you throw this in the wash, which you're gonna need to be doing, um, if you don't do this seam, it kind of gets all funky and it, it's getting it back to its nice mass shape is a little harder. If you do this, it's a lot easier. Just wash it, hang dry, it's ready to go. All right, but I'm gonna do this from the top up and you kind of take this one a little slow because you're gonna have to go over your wire. So I usually kind of feel for it and I actually went over it pretty well. Sometimes I need to lift the presser foot and kind of have it jump over the wire a little bit. Um, and then I don't do this directly on the seam. I usually go quarter to an eighth inch to one side of that center seam. And it's probably gonna look a lot prettier on the front than it does on the back. But then again, these masks are meant to be functional. And the only one who's seen the inside of this mask is you. So well, I got it pretty close, look at that. Pretty close to my seam. And then side it was pretty darn close to. All right, so top stitch the top, top stitch across the front. And now we're gonna top stitch the bottom. And then top stitching, the top stitching on this is actually really important because um, it's gonna keep your mask from moving out of its mask-like shape when you wash it, which you're gonna wanna do every time you wear it. Okay, so top stitch the bottom half. I have threads everywhere. Uh, now we're gonna go to this, and you can pin this, or you can be like me and break all the rules and not pin it. Um, I do pin something sometimes. All right, and now you've got your casings. There they are. There's one. I have threads absolutely everywhere. I have a daughter who clips threads. She's eight. She's not much useful for a lot of things, but man, she is an excellent thread clipper. Okay. So, last seam, right there. There you go, clip your threads forever. That, you are done. You will, at this point, you will either string your elastic through in a continuous loop, like this one here, or, uh, or you will take your ties and you will attach them, after you clip all these threads off, you'll attach them here and here, and there, and there. So then it would have, you'd be able to tie it on. All right, so hopefully that helps you. Um, I know it's a lot more steps and it's a lot more complicated than my last mask, but it will conform to your face better. And um, anyway, shout out to my rocket scientist. I don't remember if I did this, I did this in the test video, but here we are. I'm a science teacher in real life for my homeschool group and I miss them. So hi rocket scientists, love you all. Thanks, bye.